Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I am not a man of God, 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 I am not a واشهد ان لا سيدنا ونبينا وشفينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وصلى الله تعالى حبيبه محمد وعاله وصحابه واهل بيته وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا محبوب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين. دوستو بزرگو ساتي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله سبحانه وتعالى نبهت فضل كرم جن نسمع أبن يادة تفرمي. وخصوصا اس ملکیج اور اس پر فتن دورج حضور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے دین اسلام دے پر چند دی توفیق دا فرمائیے اور بارگر رسالت اج درود شریف بیجنے دے توفیق دا فرمائیے اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی great blessings upon us who has guided us today given us توفیق to come to the masjid of Allah and given us bestowed upon us the remembrance of Allah and the remembrance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is a great blessing and the other blessing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us the understanding and the tawfiq to send that salam and durood upon Imam al-Anbiya the chosen Habib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rahmati lil'alameen Khatam al-Nabiyyeen Hadrat Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Because sending durood and salam This is a great deed, a great neki This neki is not small but this is a very very big neki Hazun Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They said in the hadith about durood and salam when a person reads one durood upon me, salam and durood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive ten of his sins, give him ten times sins, and raise his elevated state ten times higher. To become nearer to the Prophet of Allah subhanahu In another hadith, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the person who reads the most durood sharif upon me, the most the drew the Islam upon me, he will be with me like this on the day of Qiyam. Right next to the Messenger of Allah. Where else do you want to be on the day of Qiyam? Where else do you want to be on the day of judgment? So there's some other relevance involved here. Uh, every person wants to become near to Allah. But to become near to Allah, first you have, have to become near to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's, that's the immediate thing. Attain the closeness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Attain that muhabbat. Increase the love for the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Increase that love in your heart. When you have increased that love in your heart, then you have to show amal upon that love too. Any ki sirf zabani madrab, me bari mohabbat karna, bara ish karna, ish ka rasool, mohabbat rasool. This is lip service. You want to show your love to Allah's Habib, to the Prophet of Allah, then show that love. 
show that love in your amal zindagi, in your amal. Because when you do the amal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say yes. He is following the sunnah of my Habib. Not only will he receive the benefits and rewards of the sunnah, but he will receive rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, this is what life's all about. This is what life's all about. Today, unfortunately, because we live in this poor fitan door, we live in this time of fitna and this dunya and everywhere around us. I always say this. I always see young, young brothers, Muslim brothers who are trying to come towards deen. They're trying their best to pray their five salats, to come to the masjid, but there's always some kind of obstacle in the way. There's some, some, something dragging them back. Matter of, a person will try to come to the masjid, but somehow there will be some other distraction, whether it could be the TV, it could be some other person. Yaar, aaj masjid chhodde. Yeah. Baadish namaz par Let's go watch this film. Or let's go somewhere else. Let's do this instead. There's more maza in this. this. This is the kind of thing what we're seeing today. So unfortunately, there are many distractions. But this comes down. This comes down to your nafs. This comes down to your desires in your heart. What do you actually want? Do you want Allah? Do you want Allah and Allah Rasul? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or do you just want the maza of the dunya? Because this dunya, this dunya is only for a few years. I remember this hadith I just read and Subhanallah Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ad dunya sijinul mu'mineen wa jannatul kafiri the, the messenger of Allah said Ke dunya, dunya is a prison for the believers but the dunya is a paradise for the disbelievers this dunya is not for us this is a prison when a mu'min, when a believer leaves this dunya with his amal then subhanallah his paradise is waiting for him but today unfortunately the roles have switched the roles have switched so believers are taking this dunya as their paradise just like the disbelievers whereas the messenger of Allah said that this dunya is a test for you the dunya was made for you but you were made for the akhirah you were not made for this dunya you were made for the akhirah and today in this time we see many of our Muslim brothers Muslim sisters too but I, I always phrase towards the brothers Okay, everybody knows that Allah is the greatest. Everybody says Allahu Akbar. And when a baby was born, the azan was given in his ear. Every single Muslim, the azan was given in your ear. The ikama was given in your other ear. You heard the takbir. You heard the zikr of Allah straight away in your ears. That zikr penetrates into your heart. But then it's up to you. It's up to the Muslim to keep that penetration and that zikr of Allah contained within his heart. This is what Iman is. When Iman is in your heart, it's for you to protect that Iman. Protect your Iman in your heart. You had the taqbeer, the azan given to you. You know Allah is the greatest. You know Muhammad Rasulullah is the Rasul of Allah. You know Muhammad Rasulullah is the Habib of Allah. You knew this from the day you were born, but you did not protect this. You did not protect this zikr. <coughs> and when the time came up that you became an adult or even teenagers, you knew you have understanding now today. But still today in the morning, especially in the morning, the reason why I mention morning is because nowadays, Bari Sardiya. Nowadays is winter time and you go to sleep in your cozy beds with your cozy quilts, zarai, kambal, blanket, you cover yourself and you, subhanallah, you have a comfort sleep. Subhanallah, 
Both sukoon hai. But the time of the test comes in the morning. The time of the test, especially in the winter time, in this country, Pakistan di gal kuch ho re. Pakistan di gal kuch ho re. Because that winter is nothing compared to this winter in this country. Waking up in this country, in the morning, and even this morning is not early morning, it's 7, 7, 30 Jamaat. But still waking up in the morning is a great difficult task for a mu'min. When you heard the takbir, you knew who is the greatest. What, mo what, mo what motivates you to get up in the morning? What motivates you? For a true believer, a true Muslim, a true mu'min, who believes Allah is the greatest, who believes Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is my life, this is my zindagi. If anything motivates me in this dunya, then it is only Allah and Allah's Rasul. If anything motivates me in the morning, to wake up in the morning for Fajr Salat, it is only Allah, the love for Allah, and the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what should motivate you to get you up in the morning. But today, what's happening today? My young brothers, what's happening today? You will not turn your alarm on to wake up for Fajr, but you will, you will turn your alarm on to wake up for work, or for school, or for college. This is Hakikat today. So you will not wake up for Allah the Raza. You will not wake up for Allah, the Creator who created you, the love of Allah, you will not wake up for Allah, not wake up for Allah's worship, not wake up for Allah's sake. That, that doesn't motivate you, but you will wake up for work. You will wake up for college. You will wake up for school. What, what does this tell you? What does this tell you? That Allah does not motivate you, but what motivates you is your work. Does your work motivate you to wake up in the morning? Does your college motivate you to wake up in the morning and go to college? Or go to university? Or go to school? Let me tell you something. The way our Muslims are thinking today. Okay, if I forget about Fajr. If I wake up for work. And kadi kadi banda late bhi ho janda. He gets up late for work. My God. You know, he's even saying, Allah is my Lord. He wakes up, he tries to get ready quickly because he's late for work. And if I go in late for work, I'm going to be in trouble with the big boss. My boss is going to, I'm going to be in trouble with the boss. Muslims are more concerned about the motivation in waking up for work, not upsetting the boss at work. Then what about the big boss, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What about the big boss? You're more interested in not upsetting your boss at work, or your teacher at college, or your professor at university, because you don't want to be late. What about upsetting the big boss, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? <clears throat> Only one, sh one thing should motivate you, and that should be the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You should be waking up in the morning for Fajr Salat. You should be waking up, putting on your alarm clock for Fajr Namaz. Waking up in the winterest of mornings. Waking up when there's ice and there's snow outside on the ground. But you know that the only thing <coughs> that will heat you up, the only thing that will heat your heart, is the zikr and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget about the weather outside. Forget about the snow outside. Forget about the weather outside. The only thing that should motivate you, the only thing that should heat, but that flame of Allah, the flame of the ishq rasul, the love of Allah in your heart, is the worship and the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is haqiqat. This is haq. There's no other options, there's no other way because your life in this dunya will determine what your outcome will be in the akhirah. Your life in this dunya, it will determine 
what your outcome will be in the Akhirah. You worship Allah in this life, you will get Allah in the Akhirah. You please Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this life, you will get Rasulullah sallallahu in the Akhirah. But then you want to please, you want to live for this dunya, then you will not have the dunya, you will not have the Akhirah. You want this dunya, you will not have the Akhirah. When Hazrat Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq, when they saw the Messenger of Allah secluded in one room, and they had nothing on their back, except the imprint of the matting, the date palm matting which was imprinted on the back of Rasulullah And Hazrat Sayyidina Umar, Umar al-Farooq, he saw this, and the great Khalifa, the great Sahabi Rasul, he started to cry. And he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He started to cry and he says, I can't believe the way you are living. You are the Prophet of Allah. You are the Imam Al Anbiya. You are the Habib of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But yet, I see that the emperors and the kings of Persia and the emperors of Rome, they are living in luxury and comfort in this dunya. And you are the Prophet of Allah and you are living like this. The Messenger of Allah <coughs> sallallahu said, Oh Ibn Khattab, Oh Ibn Khattab, are you in shock? Are you in shock? Do you have doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought forward their comfort and their luxuries for them in this dunya and Allah has reserved the best of luxuries for the mu'min for the believers in the akhirah we don't want this luxury we want the luxury and the comfort that Allah has in store for us in the akhirah and then the messenger of Allah continued and then they said that my example my example is like a traveler who travels and he rests beneath a tree for a short while he rests and then he gets up and he moves on he gets up and he moves on i am but a traveler this should be the example for every single believer we are only travelers in this dunya you are only resting for a few years you have to move on don't just sit here and think yeah this is my resting place this is not your resting place Take the example of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. This is only a resting place. You rest, you wake up, you get up, and you go to your ultimate destination. Let me relate to you one story before I finish. Has a deep meaning to this. Hadrat Sayyidina, Hadrat Imam Al Ghazali, Rahmatullah, a great scholar, a great Imam, a great Awliya Kamalin. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Al Ghazali records this story in his Ihil Madin in one of his books on the greed of the dunya. And he relates the story of Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus, Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And he writes in Ihil Madin that in the time of Isa alayhi salam, there was a man who came and he said to Isa alayhi salam, O Prophet of God, can I accompany you on your travels today? He says, Isa alayhi salam said, take it, come with me. So this man, he accompanied Isa alayhi salam on their travels. And while they were traveling, Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam rested near the bank of a river. And Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam had a bag with him. And he had some bread. He had three loaves of bread in there. Hadrat Isa alayhi salam took one of the bread in your language, roti. He took one of the roti, the bread for himself. He gave the other bread to his companion and he said, eat. So the companion, he ate the bread. Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam ate his bread. And afterwards, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he went to the river to drink some water. When 
the Prophet of Allah, Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam, came back to where he had, a, we had, where he had his companion. He looked into the bag, and the third bread, the third roti, was gone. So Isa Islam said to the companion, "Where is the third loaf of bread? Where is the third roti?" <clears throat> the companion says, "Wallahi." You know, like in our language, we say Kasmi, Allah di Kasmi, I don't know. So the companion says, Wallahi, I swear by, by Allah, I don't know where it is. So Isa Islam says, Chalo, let's continue. They went to the bank of a river, the same bank. Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam grabbed the hand of his companion. He says, hold my hand. And they walked across the river on top of the surface of the water. When they got to the other side, Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam said to his companion, he said, listen, by the one who showed you this miracle, tell me who ate the third bread. Who ate the third bread? <coughs> the companion said, Wallahi, Qasmi, Allah di Qasmi, I don't know. So Isa Islam said, Chalo, let's continue. So they continued on their journey. They came to a place where there were much animals. And Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam saw a deer, and the deer had two young ones, two young babies. So Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam said, let's, let's, we're hungry now, let's catch that young one. So they caught the young one. They sacrificed this in the name of Allah, and they ate the meat. When they ate the meat, and then Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam, he did the dua to Allah. And he said, Ya Allah, from the Tawfiq of Allah, from the glory of Allah, make this young deer rise up alive again. The deer which was cut up into pieces, it came back together and it became alive again. In front of the companion's eyes. At that moment, Sayyidina Isa salam said to the companion, from the one, from the one who has showed you this miracle, tell me who ate the third bread. The companion still, he still said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, Allah di Qasmi, it wasn't me. <laughs> so Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam said, Chola, let's continue. They continued until they came to this land. There was a land where there was much dust and desert. Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam said, sit down. He sat down. The Prophet of Allah, Prophet Jesus Isa Islam, he gathered some of this dust. And he prayed to Allah, Ya Allah, this dust, Make this dust into gold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned that dust into gold. Hadrat Sayyidina Isa Islam separated that heap of, of gold into three, three heaps. And he said that this first heap of gold is for me. The second heap of gold is for you. And the third heap of gold is for that one who ate the third loaf of bread. Straight away he said, Wallahi, Qasme, it was me. Qasme, it was me. Isa alayhi salam said, Oh, from the beginning it was you. But you wanted the dunya. Your, your niyat was the dunya. So you take all of these three heaps of gold, you go your way, and I'll go my way. Last thing. That man who took the gold, that wasn't his end. Because when he tried to take the gold, two other men came along. Two other men saw that this man had much gold. They said, let's get some of this gold. Let's kill this man and let's get his gold. So what they did is, they told that man, who was the companion first, listen y'all, we're hungry. Take some of this gold and why don't you buy us some food? from the near village, from the near town. So he said, Chulo, that man, he goes to the near village with some of that gold to buy some food. When he buys some food, some bread, he has a niyat that I don't want to give the gold to these two. So what I'm gonna do, what he did is he poisoned the bread. He put their poison in the bread. And he said, when I bring the bread back to these two people, I'm gonna make them eat it so they die and I keep the gold to myself. So they had a bad niyat that they were going to kill this person. This person had a bad niyat that he was going to kill those people. 
When he came back, those two people, they killed that person. And then they took the bread and they ate the bread and then two people died also. When three of those people died, Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was returning from his travels. When he was returning with some of his sahabas, some of his companions, and he saw three people dead, and still the three heaps of gold were lying there. And Hadrat Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam said, this was the place where Allah's azab was descending. This is the place where Allah's punishment was descending. And this is what happens to a person when he goes after the dunya. This is what happens to a person when he goes after the dunya. The dunya will destroy you. Remember, the dunya will destroy you. You can never attain the dunya. The dunya will destroy you. If you want to attain something, only attain the akhirah. Only attain the akhirah. Ad-dunya sijr al wa jannat al kafiri The dunya is a prison for the believer and it is a paradise for the disbeliever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us samaj, give us aql, give us understanding, give us amal de tufiq wa akhir dawana na alhamdulillah rabbil alameen sunnah